My name is Lori Sorensen, and I study the patterns and processes of shark evolution at the University of California, Los Angeles. Sharks are one of the oldest groups of vertebrates. They are top predators in the world's oceans, playing a key role in maintaining the health of marine ecosystems that thousands of species depend on, including humans. I study the evolution of sharks, the gradual change in these fishes over time, which leads to the diversity we observe today. Despite their popularity, we still have relatively limited knowledge about shark biology and their evolution, including the relationships among the major groups that represent the over 500 described species. In order to explore the evolution of sharks, we must build a phylogenetic tree. Just as you would trace back your own ancestry, adding new members over generations, scientists use a family tree of sorts to reconstruct the evolutionary history of groups of organisms. But instead of brothers, sisters, aunts, and uncles, the nodes and tips of the tree represent species, or even entire groups of species. The relationships among the species at the tips are determined using selected traits that are passed on from generation to generation. Historically, scientists have used morphological characters, such as presence or absence of a bone, or shapes of anatomical structures. Nowadays, we tend to use DNA sequences, which can be obtained in large numbers very rapidly. DNA is made up of a chain of bases, A, C, T, and G, and each one in a sequence is considered an individual character. So for example, let's assume you want to know how three shark species are related to each other. We can look at the DNA sequence from a gene in each of the three species and search for mutations in only some of the sequences. This will tell us that the species that share these mutations will have a common ancestor where the mutations first arose. Because using only a few characters can lead to erroneous or unresolved relationships, the number of characters we use can be very important. Previous shark studies have used only a handful of DNA regions, sequencing them one at a time. But this has not been enough to get a robust shark tree, one that represents the true relationships among the species. For my research, I am using a revolutionary DNA sequencing method to simultaneously collect hundreds of DNA regions, providing hundreds of thousands of characters to generate a robust phylogenetic tree for the sharks. This phylogenetic tree will then act as a framework that is used to test hypotheses about shark evolution. The questions I am interested in include, when did the major groups of sharks evolve? Why are the shark species distributed so unevenly across groups? And what processes have allowed certain shark groups to be so species rich? Understanding shark evolution is also very important because sharks are under intense fishing pressure. Because limited resources force us to prioritize conservation efforts, it's imperative that we ground our decisions in scientific evidence to maximize the benefit of the actions we take. A robust phylogeny can identify shark groups that should receive more protection because they are found in very limited geographic regions, or others that represent ancient lineages with low diversity, thus higher potential to go extinct. Rooting our decisions in the biology and evolutionary history of these fishes will help prioritize and conserve valuable shark diversity, ensuring the stability of the oceans for future generations. If you'd like to learn more about my research, please contact me at lsorensen at ucla.edu.